Hey there, my friend, welcome. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at the Fit Mother Project. My team and I were the health and fitness experts for busy moms in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, like all these amazing women you see here. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is show you 11 of the best free weight exercises for women. So if you're out there and you're starting to exercise and you know that strength training is important and free weight exercises are the best form of strength training, then this video is gonna be amazing for you. Because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break down exercises by body part. We're gonna start with legs. I'm gonna go over the best free weight exercise for legs. Then we're gonna move on to chest, back, shoulders, arms. I'm gonna give you exact demos for all these exercises, some ideas on sets and reps. Now this video is gonna be a little more extensive because right now we're gonna hop behind me in the gym. I'm gonna demo all of these for you, but I promise you this, you watch this video, you watch the form. These are some of the best exercises. They're simple. They require basic equipment like a bench and a pair of dumbbells, and they will get you great results. So let's hop behind the gym. Let's dive into today's video, and I'll see you on the inside. All right, so let's get into the 11 best free weight exercises for women. We're going to start with the leg exercises. We have four, and the first leg exercise is good old-fashioned squats. Now, there's a couple ways we can do squats with free weights. Um, I'm assuming we have a pair of dumbbells, but we could be using kettlebells as well. I'm going to show you my two favorite versions. The first one is a standard uh, weights at sides squat. So what we want to do is get the weights right outside feet, which feet should be roughly around shoulder width, and I want you to bend down in a squat grab the weights and stand back up with them. This is our starting position here. And I wanna point out a couple things because the starting position is incredibly important. Here, you see from the side, I have good strong posture. My back is straight, my head is straight just like this. And as I begin the squat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit back into an invisible chair behind me. Hips come back and they come down just like this. My chest stays high, pause at the bottom, press right back up. I'll do a couple more reps just like this. Down. Reaching parallel, push right back up. The weight in this version will drag down the sides of your legs. That is fine. What you don't wanna do is try to push those dumbbells out like this, because this puts stress on your shoulders and it doesn't actually work the legs. So again, couple reps, just like this. Shoulder width, chest stays high, core is tight. Sit back down in that chair, push up. Couple common problems with this exercise. Number one, knees are gonna be caving in. So you may find as you're squatting, this starts to happen. If that's the case, I want you to feel like you're pushing out just like this, keeping those glutes activated as you squat. Another common problem, you may find that your core is not strong enough and you start to round forward and you get this kind of turtle shell squat action. We don't want this. Chest is up, back is strong, squeeze with the arms, come right on up. That is like, I consider hands by side squat. Another version is a front loaded squat. Weights sit up on the shoulders like this, or they can sit right here in your hands. I'll do this because it actually takes the weight off of the arms. And this, very much the same, except the load is sitting up top. So take a deep breath, sit back down, invisible chair, pause, press right back up. A couple more reps, down, pause, up, from the different angle here, down, pause, press right back up. You wanna make sure if you do load them like this and the weight's a little more in front of you, don't let the weights pull you forward. Stay nice and upright just like this. So that is how you do the squats. For squatting exercises, you're starting out, I wanna make sure you're getting enough reps in. So I would say do a set of anywhere like eight to 15 reps and you might wanna do three sets of that to start your workout. So a set of eight to 15 reps, rest for around a minute, another set, rest for a minute, another set, rest for a minute. And that will be your first leg exercise. Second one, insofar as we had a squatting motion, we wanna have a hip hinging motion. So we're gonna do a deadlift with the dumbbells. This is an amazing exercise because the squats definitely work your quads, your glutes, your core. The deadlifts have a little more of a focus on the back and the hammies and the glutes. So we're gonna get our dumbbells. We're gonna put them right in front of our feet here in this instance. I'm gonna bend down and I wanna see the position right here as I'm starting. There is a slight bend in the knees right here. I'm not completely stiff, but I'm definitely not bent down like a squat. I'm like this midway position. I'm gonna grab the weights right here. Back is straight. Glutes and hamstrings are tense. I'm pulling the weights right up my body, squeezing my glutes, and now I'm unwinding right down. Dumbbells stay very close. Pause at the deep stretch. Fire right back up. Use your glutes and your hamstrings to pull you up through. Come on down, hinging of the hips, pause at the bottom, 
Press right back up. Couple reps from this angle. Deep breath, core is tight. Come on down. Fire right back up. Breathing wise, on the way down, you wanna brace. Exhale on the way up. So again, a couple more reps. Down, pause, right back up. Now if your hamstrings are not that flexible, the deadlift might look a little more bent. It might look a little bit more like this and right back up. That's fine. We don't wanna turn it into a squat though because the hip hinging motion of the deadlift is working those glutes and those hammies versus the squat, which is that sit down motion, a lot more quads. So the squats and the deadlifts, they pair really well together. With the deadlift, you also might wanna do three sets, anywhere from, let's say six to 15 reps. If you're new to exercise, go lighter. Do some higher reps, practice the exercise. It's gonna get you good at it and you can add weight when you can really do, let's say 10 to 15 reps very easily, then you'll increase your weight. So again, three sets would be a really good target on the deadlifts. Now, next exercise with free weights is a good old fashioned Bulgarian split squat. One of the hardest and most effective workouts. And what you need for this is something to prop your feet up on. So I have a simple weight bench here, but you could very much use a chair, or something like this. So I'm gonna put this behind me, move these weights out of the way here for a second, and I'll bring the, these little weights here. So to do the Bulgarian split squat, what we wanna do is get one foot out in front of us just like this. We're gonna put the other foot back behind the bench. This foot is resting, this foot is engaged. We'll have our weights at our side here, and we're gonna come down just like this, isolating this leg and this glute and pushing right back up. This is what a rep will look like down, up. So I'll do a couple of the weights really fast. You can see what that looks like. So position right here, core is tight, arms are tight. And all these exercises, you're squeezing with your arms, coming down, pause, press right back up. Down, pause, press back up. Down, pause, press back up. You wanna feel like you're pressing through that glute as you're coming down. Another rep, down, pause, press back up. So that is how you do the Bulgarian split squat. Obviously I did one leg, I would switch things, do the other leg. But the purpose of keeping this tutorial moving forward, we'll assume I do both legs. I would do one leg for let's say 10 reps, immediately into the other leg for 10 reps, and then I would rest. So left leg, right leg, rest, left, right, uh, rest. This is an exercise that if you do at a higher rep range, let's say 10 to 15 reps, you might not even need weights to start. This might be a body weight, free weight exercise, but in time, you maybe have holding fives, tens, maybe even 15, 25 pounds. So we're really gonna isolate that glute and your leg. When it comes to free weight exercises, you wanna do both two leg exercises, squats, deadlifts, and single leg exercises, which challenge your core, challenge that glute and that leg in different ways. So it's good to incorporate both. So with this, three sets. I would say anywhere from 10 to 15, start your first time body weight and then get stronger, add some weights. Our fourth and final free weight leg exercise is a good old fashioned walking lunge. So I'm gonna get this uh, bench out of the way for a second. And what we're gonna do here is get our weights right back here. A good posture, right? Standing tall, chest is up, arms are back. We're gonna take a step forward, come down. Knee lightly touches, push up, step forward, down. Knee lightly touches, push up, small space. So we turn around, you'll probably have a little more of a runway than me here, but come down, pause, press up through that leg, step, down, fire right on up, down, right on up, turn it around. Key thing with a walking lunge and why I like it better than let's say a stationary lunge where you just kind of push back like this is a stationary lunge has a lot of momentum involved where you really just can almost cheat the motion with a walking lunge, you load that front leg, then you push through slow, but deliberately through that front leg, activating that glute big time. I recommend you do these slow. You really feel that front leg coming through. And I count these as one, one, two, two. So I would do those and I would say a good starting rep range here would be to do two sets of 10 to 15 reps per leg. Really is gonna fire up your cardio. Really amazing exercise. And again, as you can get 
complete all those reps, you increase your weight and you get stronger. So those are four amazing free weight leg exercises. We're gonna move on. We're gonna start chaining the back and the arms. But in, for the purpose of the leg, if we're putting this into a full body workout, we have a workout link below in the description for you that is only 24 minutes, works your whole body. You can get that sent to your email. And again, for the purpose of this video, you could pick two of those exercises and pick two leg exercises, then we'll pick two of these back exercises. So back exercise. Back exercises involve pulling things toward your body. These are rows, either with two arms or with one arm. We're gonna demonstrate both. I'll show you a two arm row first. It's called a bent over dumbbell row. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna get in that position very much similar to where we're at with the deadlifts. The weight is right here over our feet. We're gonna bend down. We're gonna load those hammies. So this is much like that deadlift starting position. Head is straight, shoulders are pulled back, back is straight. What you don't want is this right here, this kind of turtle shell thing, not good for your back. This is where we start right here. Everything's pulled back. And deliberately, we're gonna get those arms nice and tense. We're gonna pull the weights up, pinch the shoulder blades, slowly lower. Right to here. At the bottom, pause, fight right on up, squeeze those shoulder blades, pause, come right on down. Pull, squeeze, right on down. Now, this is a back exercise. It does work the biceps too, but I want you to feel like your arms are like cables. They're like rope pulleys and you're pulling with these hook cables that are your arms through your back and right on down. We are gonna do some specific biceps exercises later, but this is the two-arm dumbbell rail. And the reason this exercise is amazing is because it's not just working the back. It's working the glutes and the hamstrings too, because to maintain this position requires a lot of core strength and activation. So that's why the two-arm dumbbell row is amazing. Excuse me, another version is the one-arm dumbbell row. See a lot of people do these at gyms. And for good reason, this is a great exercise. So one-arm dumbbell row, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some kind of bench. Again, if you don't have a bench at home, it's fine. You could use a chair, the side of a bed. We're gonna row one arm at a time. So I'm gonna get one foot out here, hand braced strongly on the bench, other foot here. What I'm doing is creating space right here where I have a stable tripod we're gonna be rowing through right here. I'm gonna grab the weight, bring it up, squeeze that dumbbell. I'm gonna pull up right to here, opening the body slightly, pausing, coming right back down, pause. Fire on up, squeeze, slowing down. I want you to focus to the tempo that I'm using. Explosive up, pause, one, two, down. Explosive up, pause, one, two, down. This is an exercise that's all about feeling the muscle contract. I could very much do this. These really sloppy, quick rows, not gonna work the back as much as if I'm deliberate, I'm braced, I pull and I squeeze, and I come right on down. So, to flip on the other side, all you would do, hop around, Grab the other arm, just like this. Head is forward, spine is straight. Come up, pause, right on down. Fire, right on down. So that is the one arm dumbbell row. Why do one arm versus two arm? Well, the two arm, a lot harder on your core. You're involving that mid back a lot. The one arm dumbbell row is a little more isolated. I recommend you do both. So for your back training after you've done legs, you might do two or three sets of the two arm and two or three sets per arm of the one arm. I recommend you rest around 60 seconds to two minutes between sets, just to make sure you have enough recovery. If you're not resting enough between these sets, you're not gonna be ready to go for that next set. So if you did like 10 reps the first set, do set number two, and you can only get five, you didn't rest long enough. I want you to try to get roughly around the same number of reps per set. If you miss one or two, that's totally fine. But you set a goal, let's say with these rows, you wanna get 10 to 12 reps. Once you can do 12 reps with a given weight, your next workout, I want you to try five pounds heavier, maybe even two and a half pounds heavier, because you need to continually lift heavier weights to stimulate the body to continue to grow. So those are two great back exercises that are very simple, no, not a lot of equipment involved. And again, to follow up leg exercises, I recommend you do both of these back exercises. And now let's move on to some chest exercises. So I'm gonna flip this bench around here. Our chest exercises also work our shoulders and our triceps. And uh, where the back exercises were pulling, chest exercises are pushing things away from our body. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a bench and we're gonna do a couple different kinds 
of chest presses. Now, chest presses are very similar to a push-up. We're pushing something away from our body. So we're gonna get the weights out in front of us here. And how you pick up the weights, I believe, is important on these chest pressing exercises. I have a flat bench set up here. I'm getting the weights, I'm picking them up, putting them on my legs, getting them really close to my hips. I'm gonna roll back with them and my body's staying in nice tight position just right here. With my shoulder blades pinched, my feet firmly planted on the ground, take a deep breath, push the weights out. At this position, the weights are just directly above me. I'm squeezing my chest. And as I come down, I'm opening that chest up, feeling that contraction. Pause, turn around and press and squeeze. Slowly lower, one, two, pause, press, squeeze. Right on down, slowly lower, one, two, pause, press and squeeze. How am I breathing during this? Well, with all these exercises, during the hard part, in this case, the hard part is when I'm going from here to push, this is when I'm exhaling. So it looks like inhale. Just like this, making sure you're squeezing that chest. The dumbbells lightly touch at the top, just like this. And I'm really trying to drive them together, just like this. Coming down, opening up, pause. Squeeze right on up. So you can use, when you're done, you bring them right here and you lightly lower them here. I don't want you to be afraid to drop the weights lightly. Obviously, if you're at home, you might not want to drop your weights on tile. But what you want to be careful of is as you get stronger, is this motion right here, if you're not careful, can be dangerous on your shoulders. So I like to lower them right here, crunch a little bit, lightly drop them. So that is a flat chest press. It's one of the best exercises, free weights for your chest, shoulders, triceps, period. And if you wanna vary it up, all you do is do the same exercise with a slightly different bench angle. So even doing this, raising that bench, maybe like 15, 20 degrees, now works a little more of this upper area of your chest, or dropping it below parallel to a decline, changes up the motion just a little bit. It is the same great motion, just slightly different. So incorporate all three different angles. But what I recommend starting off, do one type of angle for three, four weeks. Get stronger at it and then change the angle. Maybe you start with flat, then you go to incline, then you do go to decline for a couple weeks, mix it up. They're all three great. And you might be thinking, hey, I thought that chest flies were a good chest exercise. They're decent, they're okay. I think when it comes to the cables, uh, chest flies are a lot better done with the cables because you get a constant tension. With the dumbbell chest fly, it's not as good as the press because at this point, as I'm opening it up, you're not getting as much constant tension pulling away from the vector of the chest. The weight's constantly pulling down. So the tension's a little weird, but chest fly works too, but I recommend pressing as a good starting point on these chest exercises. So you have those three angles, and I think like the back exercises, anywhere from eight to 15 reps, is a really great starting point. Again, key form points, squeeze, get that body tight. Remember to press through your legs. You bring it down, you pause, you explode up, and that's how you do the chest press. Now, let's move on to some shoulder exercises. Shoulders are certainly worked in those chest pressing, but we're gonna do some uh, specific shoulder exercises. So the first one is a seated shoulder press. I'm gonna sit on a bench, on a chair, and this is just so that I can be nice and upright and my core can be nice and braced. I'm gonna get these weights, I'm gonna bring them up, put them on my lap, just right here. Now one leg at a time, I'm gonna kick them up to my shoulder. So left leg kick, right leg kick. This is our starting position. I'm gonna take a deep breath in, open up, press overhead, come on down, pause, press overhead, come on down, pause, press overhead, Keeping the core nice and tight. Pause, press overhead. Just like that chest press on the way down, I'm inhaling. <sighs> Exhaling on the way up. <sighs> Just like this. Now you can also do this exercise standing. It's a little harder on your core, or you could do this exercise if you do have a bench with this thing totally up like this and you could be sitting back against this, doing the, doing the shoulder press just like this. It's a total preference issue. If you have support on your back, less hard on your core. So if you wanna make a more dynamic full body exercise, you might wanna do it without back support like I demonstrated. 
Shoulder press, really good. Follow up with your chest pressing with two to three sets of shoulder press. Anywhere in the eight to 12 rep range is great. And for shoulders, I'm gonna show you one more exercise. But what I'd suggest is if you're a beginner in free weight exercises, you probably only pick one shoulder exercise for your full body workout and you might alternate between them. So our second exercise for the shoulders is a lateral raise. You've probably seen a lot of people do this exercise. And how it works, stand up with the dumbbells. You need to go a lot lighter than you did on the shoulder presses. Shoulders are back, posture's nice and good just like this. Deep breath, you're raising the dumbbells up to your sides and then you're bringing them right back down. So right here, deep breath. Just like this. Raising up, pause, coming on down. What I find is that if you feel like you have any shoulder pain, opening those thumbs up a little bit so your arm is in external rotation like this makes it a little easier on your shoulder. Just like this, out to your sides. Pause at the top for a second, come right on down. If this is an exercise you don't need to go heavy. It's about feeling that shoulder contraction. Pause, right on down, up and pause, right on down. So I'd recommend if you're doing this, again, I would pick either the shoulder presses or the lateral raises. You can alternate between them. If you're doing lateral raises on this particular day, I would go higher rep. Anywhere from the 10 to 15 rep range, three sets would be great. So that is a lateral raise a version. You can also do them for the front, but as a beginner, I think this is a more versatile um, whole shoulder exercise, so I recommend the lateral raise. We're almost through this full body. So at this point, we've done legs, back, chest, shoulders. Let's finish off with some arms. So the best free weight exercise is for the front of the arm. The biceps are some kind of curl, and there are so many different curl variations. I'm gonna show you a couple of my personal favorites. One kind of curl that I absolutely love is a standing alternating dumbbell curl. So you're standing just like this, one arm at a time, you bring this up and you squeeze, you come down nice and slow, right to here. Next arm up, right on down. The benefit of one arm at a time is you can really focus on feeling that muscle. Especially if you're new to strength training, you need to build a mind-muscle connection. So when you're curling with this arm, I want you to really feel that muscle work and go slow on the way down, feel that muscle work. You could do curls really um, sloppy like this, just swing in the weights and you're not gonna get the same contraction as if you slow down, use a lighter weight, you come and you squeeze, you come right on down, squeeze right on down. You can also experiment with curling both arms at the same time. Not as good for isolating the mind muscle contraction, but it works your core more. And that looks something like this. Up and squeeze, right on down. Up and squeeze right on down. You can also play around with what's considered a hammer curl, where instead of doing this motion called supination, where that wrist opens up, you keep that wrist straight and you come across your body just like this. It works slightly different muscles in your arm, but for the purposes of this video, we'll still consider it a curl. So I'd recommend for your workout, you pick one type of curl. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's that standing alternating dumbbell curl if it's this standing alternating hammer curl, if it's a two arm hammer curl, or if you even decide to sit down on this bench right here and do curls sat back like this, all is fine. I want you to play around with these. Find an exercise that works for you for a few weeks and then mix it up. As you're beginning these free weight exercises, you wanna get familiar with how your body feels in different positions. You may find that when you get on this bench, this is a slight incline curl and this muscle stretch like this and you do curls like this, that it works your biceps a lot more than when you're standing. All of us are different, so we need to find the exercises that work best for us, but that is how you do the curl. Really amazing exercise. Because curl, the biceps are worked during back, as you're starting out, all you need is three sets. You could do two sets of alternating, one side of hammer, excuse me, all sets alternating, all sets hammer, all of them are good. But we still need to work the triceps, the back of the arm. And the best free weight exercise um, that I love for the triceps using the dumbbells is a lying French press, AKA a skull crusher um, exercise. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get our trusty bench back out and we're gonna put this in a flat position, just like that. We're gonna grab a light weight, probably a weight similar to what you used for um, either those lateral raises or something like that. And again, when we bring these weights back, we get them right here in the hips, we roll back. We press the weights up 
This is our starting position right here. Nice and strong, squeezing. Now what we're gonna do here for this triceps motion is we're gonna bring these weights slowly down. Using the triceps, we're gonna pause right here. The weights are slightly outside my head. We're gonna press them right back up. Do a few reps uninterrupted. Pause, press. Come on down, pause, press. Right on down, pause, press. What you're not seeing happen is too much motion from the upper arm. You're not seeing me go like this, which is kind of like an exercise called a pullover. My arm, I should say my shoulder is fixed. All the motion is coming from the elbow, which is what the tricep is working. So to control the lowering and pressing right back up. You can also play around with turning the dumbbells this way. Also fine. This exercise is, is dubbed skull crushers for the reason that you're bringing these weights above your face. So be careful. If this freaks you out, then go like this and keep them outside your head. Wide like this. Totally fine. Key thing is you're coming down. Pause. Pressing right on up. So that is how you do the skull crushers with the dumbbells. Other great exercises that involve no weights are some close grip push-ups. You can be on your knees doing some close grip push-ups. For these tricep exercises, I recommend three sets, eight to 15 reps. It's a very good rep range. It works for a wide variety of exercises. I want you to get good at these motions, so going higher up when you're beginning is good to really get the form and contraction down. And as a pro tip, you can alternate between your biceps and tricep exercise. You can do a set of curls immediately to a set of triceps. That is called a superset. You could be doing that back and forth. A great way to save time and it really works both muscles. So as the biceps are being worked, triceps are resting. As the triceps are working, biceps are resting. So it's a really good give and take. So that is our arm exercises. We've covered a lot. If you can even take a couple of tips from this video, here's what I would say. Starting off with some free weight exercises. Think about your body in terms of picking good exercise for legs, back, chest, shoulders, arms. Pick one to two exercises in each of those categories and do them for three sets of eight to 15 reps. It really is that simple. Build the consistency. Do that full body workout two times per week. And if you really want to see the best results possible, I recommend you scroll below in the description of this video. You get our free Fit Mom Jumpstart. We're going to give you our 24 minute metabolism boosting workout that involves some of these exercises. Plus, we're gonna give you our Fit Mom meal plan. Plus, we're gonna teach you how to get and stay motivated and make this health and fitness stuff consistent in your life. We are the Fit Mother Project. We're here to help you and your family live healthy. So we hope you found this valuable. If you did, comment below, let us know. Let us know some exercises that you do love uh, that might not have been listed here, or some stuff that you're gonna try. Interact with us here on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. And give us a thumbs up if you found this valuable. But most importantly of all, hit subscribe. Here at the Fit Mother Project, we literally have hundreds of videos we're publishing this year on weight exercises like this, nutrition tips, how to get and stay motivated, how to help your family live healthier too. So subscribe to the channel to get notified when we publish new videos and check that little notification bell. Thanks for being here, my friend. I hope you found this valuable. Scroll below in the description, check out that free Fit Mom Jumpstart. My team and I will email that to you and we'll coach you to make sure you see results this week. I'll see you in future videos and I'll talk to you very soon.